Welcome to this short video about Umpel. This is going to demonstrate to you a few key ideas about the Umpel model oriented programming language. The Umpel's homepage is at umpel.org. Umpel.org's website will show you a little, a little bit of information, a couple of examples, and for example, this shows some Umpel code, this shows a UML class diagram generated from Umpel. Umpel's name means simple UML programming language. It also means ample because you can, with Umpel, create software that is very powerful with a very small amount of syntax. You can program much more simply or you can model much more simply using Umpel. Umpel is on Google Code as an open source project code.google.com slash p slash umpl or simply code.umpl.org. Lots of information if you want to contribute to umpl. If you want to try umpl out, you can go to try.umpl.org. That is what we're going to use today to start as an example, uh, show you an example of using umpl. So here's umpl online. Let's take a look at the user interface very quickly. If we go to load and save, here there are a few examples. For example, we can look at two-dimensional shapes. What you see on the left-hand side are some, is some UMPL code, some textual code, describing, for example, class shape2d, which has a center, class elliptical shape, which is a shape2d. In other words, it's a subclass of shape2d and has a semi-major axis. On the right-hand side, we see the UML cl class diagram generated from that. You see the generalization triangles. For example, we see that, indeed, an elliptical shape is a subclass of shape 2D. You can edit either side. I can edit this diagram. I can, for example, move things around. Um, I can, I can uh, add associations. Um, I, can, I can rename things if I felt like it. So, for example, if I decided here to add additional information to shape 2D, I can click on this and I can type color. I'm going to type it in the British way. We will see over here immediately that color appears as an attribute on the textual side. If I meant that to be an integer, I can do this. I can say integer color on the textual side and over on the right hand side we see that that will show up here as as an integer as well. Okay. Few other little quick looks at the user interface. Um, if I want to clear things out, I can press start over. So num among the tools, I have the ability to add a class like this. New class appears on the graphical side and on the textual side. Um, I can create another class if I felt like it. Drop it there. I can label this A, I can label this B, I can create an association between them from here to here. Notice it's a many-to-many -many association. And you'll, you'll notice that the same notation appears over here. Class A now has many Bs. This star to star means that this class A has many Bs, and B has many A's associated with it. We'll see a little bit more syntax in a few minutes. I can undo the last action if I wanted to. Um, keep going back in time. I'm undoing the dragging. I'm un I, did, I undid that association. I can redo it to bring it back again. I can generate Java code. Generate code and down below immediately you see code which is generated from this in Java. Take a look at that code. You can type this example in and take a look at the code. You'll see that this is a very short, small number of lines, um, eight lines, and the Java code is much longer than that. In fact, we have a total of 243 lines generated from, from that Java, most of it for the association. It does say, please do not edit this code. You should treat the code generated by Java as being very much like machine code or byte code. Okay. It's designed to be compiled into a final system and not edited. The only thing you should need to edit 
is the code here. I can, in any of these classes, add methods. I can add other UML constructs, which we'll describe later or in another video. But I should not edit the Java code. If I felt like it, I can generate PHP code. Let's try that. Generate code. And down below, you'll see now this is PHP. Same thing. If I want to generate other things, such as eCore, if I want to use this in an Eclipse environment using the Eclipse modeling framework, I can generate that. I can generate a number of other notations um, that could be useful. In addition, Ample Online has a number of options. I can, for example, notice these add more items here. I can click on Photo Ready, which will clear, clean those out and make the diagram look nicer. And there are a number of other things that I can do, which we won't get into at this moment. If I just go down to the generated code for a second, we see a few little widgets over here. This one over here allows us to view the source in a text editor without the line numbers. It can be useful at times. I can copy and paste that. Or I could directly send this to the copy buffer. That would allow me to paste this into, for example, Eclipse. Um, I can print it. And, uh, and uh, there's a number of things I can do. I can find help about this particular widget. Now, all of what you see here on the left-hand side textually can also be done in Eclipse. If you click on Download the Eclipse plugin, you can get the UMPL pl a plugin for Eclipse and compile the code and generate an Eclipse, uh, an assist a system, a normal system in Java or PHP using normal Eclipse tools. That's the end of this video, a quick tour of UMPL and UMPL Online. The next video, we will introduce to you uh, some, some more details of the syntax of the Ample language.